Welcome to Old Covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live this morning. Got some very interesting things going on. First, let's go right to this story here. ISIS terrorist attack has been thwarted in uh, Moscow. Four have been arrested. RT is just now breaking this story here. It says the Federal Security Services has foiled of, uh, a series of terrorist attacks in Moscow by a group of foreign fighters who were directed by Islamic State affiliated based in Turkey, the Russian agency reported. There again, we see that Turkey's involvement with ISIS, also backed by the uh, Barack Obama administration there, uh, creating more and more havoc around the world. Just very troubling information indeed to see this. But luckily, they were thwarted in their attempts there to do terrorist acts inside of Moscow. Again, this is something that is... Uh, uh, I, I guess you would, how would you call it there? It, it, it is a, a signature mark of the uh, Obama administration and of course other administrations, not just Obama, uh, to create civil unrest in different parts of the world. Going back to the Ukrainian conflict there, this is exactly what began to happen. Unrest, foreign fighters coming into Ukraine that caused the unrest inside of Ukraine. Now they're trying to do it in Russia and of course uh, Vladimir Putin has known for quite some time, this is something that they've been trying to do, is to create division and unrest within the country there to be able to pull off the same type of scenario they did in Ukraine. Uh, of course, George Soros was there on post-coup uh, there inside of uh, Ukraine. John McCain also seen in Ukraine. In fact, uh, let me just see if I can pull images up for that for you on John McCain, because some people may think that that's kind of uh, nutty there. Uh, uh, he was there at the beginning of the coup um, and a lot of people are just totally unaware of that uh, <clears throat> how and why the US government aided a coup led by neo-nazis this is on global research right here with senator with senator John McCain uh, and, and and I didn't even realize this article was actually here the people of the United States are being deliberately misled and misinformed about the leading role played by the U.S. State Department, intelligence agencies, and neoconservatives uh, leaders in bringing neo-Nazis to power in Ukraine. The same neoconservatives, uh, po politicians, and strategists that drove the country to war against Iraq in 2003, against Libya in 2011, and nearly against Syria in 2013. It was only the uh, intervention of President Putin that actually stopped that, and yet the entire world has turned against him, uh, especially those that are backed by NATO. So, but anyway, let me let me just quickly show you that. I know we can get it in images right here, uh, where we can get, uh, of course, as you can see. Let me use this one here. It's a lot better right here. You can see the insignia there of the uh, uh, Ukraine coup. That this was kind of a little thing that they were using there. But as you can see, John McCain was definitely there and uh, very much pro this coup that was going on. You can like standing beside a thug, if you ask me, but. Uh, but anyway, that's on Business Insider, and again, um, let's just see if Business Insider actually will give me something on this. Uh, no, I don't want to wait on that. Let's move right ahead, move along. I'll go into that a little bit later. I've really been wanting to bring this information out to you, how much the uh, U.S. politicians and which politicians have actually been behind this coup from the very beginning. And John McCain let him know, I've actually heard this speech here that you're looking at here, he actually let, let the, uh, the Ukrainian coup uh, people there know that they were very much behind them in overthrowing uh, Yanukovych, who was the then president of Ukraine. And Putin even told uh, Yanukovych, he said, you should have put the, put the coup down much earlier than what you did, but you didn't, and that's what caused it to get out of control. Uh, moving along, let's go right into RT here. <clears throat> RT has now came out with a new uh, broadcast uh, this morning. When camera uh, gone, they leave people under the rebel. That is a quote from an exiting, uh, an exiting uh, uh, one of the uh, Syrian uh, citizens there that were it was inside of East Aleppo. The the different people that have lived under this tyranny there, they are expressing what they went through with the white helmets that are backed by United States, UK, and the European Union. I want you to be able to see some of this broadcast right here. Oh, the White Helmets, our previous speaker, Very interesting. Take a listen to this. Our correspondent in Aleppo spoke to Syrians who fled the rebel-held parts of the city about the kind of help they received from the so-called White Helmet rescuers. They have a curious array of endorsers. 
from the British Foreign Secretary. They are fantastically brave, uh, these Wyoming no, the poster boy of the formerly named extremist group Jabhat al-Nusra. I don't call them civil defensemen, but rather the Mujahideen of the civil defense. It what appears that the Al-Qaeda affiliates love for the White Helmets. Let me just mention this here to you. You know, we're, we, we do uh, get the uh, contact from time to time Vanessa Bealy, who has really done a lot of exposure on the White Helmets. I think Vanessa is probably the leading uh, uh, independent journalists inside of Syria, especially in Aleppo, that has really done a fantastic job on exposing the White Helmets. And that's why a lot of the journalists that are now catching this story here are able to report on this. She's been on uh, Sputnik News uh, as well in her reports that she has done. For, uh, and and I, I can't encourage you enough to look up the information she has written on the White Helmets. Isn't one way. They celebrate victories together. That's, that's important right there. As you can see, the white helmets, and this is, I mean, it's not just the fact that they wear white helmets. There's other things that identify them that you can see in the crowd here. And uh, they, they, the blue shirts that they're wearing there is on the back of the blue shirts. They, they really make them look like professionals uh, from the United States, where the United States would do professionalism, which is nice if they were really doing what they were supposed to be doing, but they celebrate with terrorists uh, for and victories over the Syrian team. army. One of its chiefs claims that they have saved tens of thousands of lives. Not the problem about resource, about the result. We are until now from 2013, until now we were able to rescue 70,000 people. Back in the Jibreen camp, brimming with people that have just fled White Helmet's turf, the organization has quite a reputation amongst the civilians that they're supposed to be saving. Everyone that we spoke to was angry and eager to talk. You ever see in Fardus men with white helmets that called the white helmets or the civil defense helping people when they were injured? Yeah, when they came to help the injured, they stole from them. If people were wearing jewelry, they cut it off. All of them were thieves. Some of them are honest, but many are just thieves. They see gold, and they take it. The white helmets as sheep in wolves clothing, thieves in disguise, was a common theme amongst the complaints. But the allegations got more serious. This man accused the organization of intentionally killing his little girl. That's a shame. I took her to the civil defense hospital and they gave her an injection filled with air to kill her. This man went as far as to celebrate an airstrike on his own house because he said it had been seized by white helmets workers side by side with rebel fighters. They forced me to leave my house and told me they were turning it into a free Syrian army base, but later they were hit by an airstrike. Finally, we got to those glossy videos appearing to show their heroics, constantly repeated by the mainstream media. They don't help people. They only work when there's a camera on them. And when the camera is gone, they leave. They abandon people under the rubble. They told us to pull the bodies out by ourselves. Lizzie Phelan. I think that's the most damning part right there in what he said there. When the cameras are there, they help. When the cameras are gone, they leave. Not to mention all the different videos that they have staged using the same children over and over and over. It is deplorable that the American people have been duped into believing this story all too long. We had actually the other day shared uh, this particular news story here where Ava actually, uh, Ava Bartlett, uh, a journalist there, she's speaking at the United Nations, actually condemned uh, the White Helmets, not, not based on just some farce reporting, but facts. Listen to what she says again. The White Helmets were, funded, were founded in 2013 by a British ex-military officer. They have been fa uh, funded to the tune of $100 million by the US, UK, and Europe and other states. They purport to be rescuing civilians in eastern Aleppo and Idlib, yet no one in eastern Aleppo has heard of them. And I say no one, bearing in mind that now 95% of these areas of eastern Aleppo are liberated. The White Helmets purport to be neutral, yet Imagine all this. It's just it's deplorable to think about this to begin with, that this is the White Helmets. These are supposed to be the rescuers, when in fact, 
They're not. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching a morning broadcast of Israeli News Live. We will be doing this more and more as time goes on, giving you at least twice daily uh, news briefings, our morning and evening hours here, uh, and then eventually, hopefully, uh, quick takes during the day as well. Today is December the 15th. I am trying to get to where I remember to tell you guys the date at the beginning of the broadcast. It's kind of hard to break an old, uh, old way of doing things. Anyway, shalom and God bless you.